The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor Thomas Goss, just checking a few things out here on my mandicello as a reference for my upcoming book, 100 More Orchestration Tips. The time crunch is huge right now as I'm getting the book ready for its release on March the 10th, but I'll take some time today to share a short tip with you about Touch 5 harmonics. In his gloriously subtle textural masterpiece, the third movement of Five Pieces for Orchestra, titled Farben, or Colors, Schoenberg asks his third solo cellist to quickly tune their C string down a whole step to B1 in order to produce a touch 4 B harmonic two octaves higher. After this, he presumes the cellist will tune right back to C again as if nothing happened. This is not only discourteous to the player, but pretty much impossible, as that cellist is playing a note in the previous bar and thus has no time to retune their string. Schoenberg's own publisher is one step ahead of him, however. In a note beneath his instruction, it's suggested that the cellist play a touch 5 harmonic on E2, producing the same pitch. This is easy enough for the cellist to do, using their thumb as a backstop and reaching out with a fingertip to lightly touch the higher node. This simple fix solves the entire problem, because at all costs, adjusting to scordatura in the middle of a movement should be avoided. As you can see in this example, the root tone of a touch 5 harmonic sits on a note that could also serve as the node of a touch 4 harmonic to produce the same intended pitch. So instead of the cellist needing a B1 as their root note in order to play a harmonic B3, they simply use the E2 node as the root and touch the B2 above it. The practical effect of this advantage, we can bring down the ceiling of artificial harmonics a few pitches, at least for cello parts. So instead of middle C as the lowest possible artificial harmonic pitch, we can add pitches downward all the way to G3, though that final pitch is easier to play and more radiant as a simple octave note on the G string. There are two caveats worth noting about touch 5 harmonics. The first is that they're usually avoided by section violins and violas, except as open string harmonics, so they should be avoided in fingered positions. Of course, a double bass won't usually be asked to play any artificial harmonic in a fingered position either, as the gaps between fingered pitch and fourth or fifth node may well be difficult to impossible to reach. So that leaves the cello as undisputed king of the touch 5 harmonic, and even at that, the technique is hardly worth using when the much easier and more reliable touch 4 harmonic covers pretty much every pitch from middle C end up. I'd recommend using touch 5 only on the C string to fill in that little hole between middle C and G3, though of course you could throw it in somewhere else just for fun. It was great spending some time with you here on the channel at the end of January. I really appreciate all the feedback and support that the community is showing me as I'm writing this book. I feel like the luckiest teacher in the world right now. If you want to get all this new training put together into one resource, check out the discounted pre-release sale, link below, of 100 more orchestration tips over on the Orchestration Online website. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next month with more video tips.